All right, welcome back. This is episode 12 of the Wanderers podcast. Ooh, um, we're getting up there. Yeah, we are. Nissa's here, my dog. Yeah. You could pr- you'll probably hear her throughout the episode just whining. Oh, you'll, you'll definitely hear her throughout oh, the yeah. episode. She's like all over the place. You make her some balls drop. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, we got her because we're going to the cottage later. But um, I uh, we had a great interview with a friend of mine and a friend of Colin's uh, from Elmira. He's out in BC now. Uh, his name's Mark. Mark Murdoch, yeah. aka the Murmur. He's a big, uh, big podcast guy. He's got a radio show out there with uh, uh, Boyce. I don't know his first name, Voice, but Voice of Boyce. Yeah, the Voice Boyce show. It's yeah, called. the Voice Boyce show. And then and, there's uh, another similar show. He has his own by himself called Root City Radio. So we talked a little bit about that. We talked about how he's an underwater welder. Uh, we got into some current events with him, and and uh, it was a really great interview. We really enjoyed it, as always. Like we've never somehow, had a bad one. So, bad somehow interview. we ended up talking about aliens. And stuff. Oh, we always. <laughs> there, there's always these themes that we always come back to. I don't know how or why, but we do. I think it's just because it's such a f- forefront topic. Our theme of... is really coming through, as in more of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it always comes up. Plus. W- we always kind of gear towards what our guests do, and then mm-hmm. we just kind of throw in what we do. Yep. No, it was a really good interview, as as they all have been. Like, yeah. It's been a really good turnout rate. I'm really liking the interview um, format. Yeah, we got like 40 minutes pretty much every time. So that's the first thing you're going to hear. Then then we move on to the album review. Right. We did... Um, I did... Uh, as I lay dying, frail words collapse. Yeah, and um, and then I did Ashes of the Wake from Lamb of God. Some of the first metal albums that we listened to, it's kind of like opened the door for us. So, mm-hmm. it was crazy looking back at all that. Yeah, like it makes me want to like, because I listened to some of those old songs and it just made me feel and remember certain things. Like it yeah. just brought me back a little centered to myself. You know. Yeah, and then uh, it's crazy how music can do that. Then that's, then we moved into, we went and seen Wonder Woman on the opening day yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we have our spoiler heavy review yeah. for that. So this is a forewarning. We're going to give you a little it's, warning. It's at the end of the show, we so we're not going to spoil it for people. Just like. So we have a little soft ending before the, the Wonder Woman review. So if you haven't seen it, you can just tune out then. Because it is, ve- we, I couldn't, I couldn't talk about it without spoiling it. So yeah. I know. So we had a little soft ending, and then that, that's the end of that. And then we move into the Wonder Woman review, um, and that's where we finish. So right now, we're just going to throw to the interview and get the show started, because that's the first thing we did, was we talked to Mark, and uh, we hope you enjoy the show. Uh, we certainly did. It was one of, our, one, of the, one of the best ones, I think. Yeah, I think so, Had too. a lot of fun with this one, so. Yeah, same here. And uh, we're going to let Randy take us to the interview. Thank you, Randy. Thanks, buddy. The murmur, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot. This is for all the royals out there. Lord, Lord. I am Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting on the toilet thinking about how I'm not rich as other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll never be... I'll never be royalty, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that'd be nice, cause that'd be nice fantasy. S- woman's bathroom smells so nice, yeah, 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 yeah. And we'll never be, Lord, 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 bless it. Lordy, Lordy, Lord. Lord, uh, okay, uh. Oh, God, sorry. Oh, uh, hold on. Hang on, uh. Oh, oh. Yo. What's up, man? Hey, dude. What's up, dude? How you doing? Fucking good. Are you already recording? Yeah, we're recording. Oh, yeah. we nice. Just get right into it. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. How's the West Coast treating you? Man, I love it out here. It's uh, another sunny 20-degree day. It's does it, it rains there a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it rains a fair bit. Like, it rained last night. It'll probably rain at some point today. Like, 75% of the days it rains, probably. Just really? a little bit, though. Is that going to kind of clear up more towards the summer, you thinking? Or does it, is it yeah, just a natural well, trend? 
the summer, like this year, I've been reading the Farmer's Almanac, and it was supposed to be a like a really high precipitation winter, which it was, and really cold, and it's supposed to be a hot, dry summer. So, so far we're there. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I'm just trying to figure out the levels here for the FX. Um, oh, yeah. Can you hear us all right on your end? Yeah, yeah. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just your levels aren't hitting where, where we want. Um, I don't okay. know, on the board. Yeah, it's all about the levels, boys. Oh, yeah. So how's Elmira? That's good. Same old, right? Yeah. I don't I, live... I put on all my camo just uh, to celebrate this episode. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's jokes. Did you do a lot of hunting when you were down here? Uh, no, I actually don't hunt at all. I'm in the middle of getting my hunting license. I got my gun license so far. Nice. That's always something I wanted to um, venture into eventually, but... It's relatively easy. Oh, yeah. What do you got to do? Um, just get your gun permit and your hunting... Like, do you just get you a hunting get license? Your, you have to go to a safety course yeah. uh, to get your possession and acquisition license. Mm hmm and then with that, you can buy firearms and ammo, and then you can go shoot shit. But to kill an animal or purchase a tag, you need to get a hunting uh, license. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually uh, thinking about going tomorrow and getting my fishing license. I haven't gotten that yet. Oh, yeah, and those are key. They'll take your fucking uh, like car and shit if you get caught with that one. Oh, yeah. They're worse than cops. Like, they have more power. Like, they can just fuck your yeah. whole whole shit up <laughs> if you're on the, if you're on the water they can tell you to get off the water and take your boat and yeah, I absolutely it, it happens i've heard of it happening out here to to people like friends of friends have lost their boats no way yeah yeah and even like to the point where if they pull you over on the road they can take your boat and everything and like if you if you over catch or if you if you catch like endangered species and stuff and they catch you and they even when you're driving off yeah. the water, as long as you have that fish, they'll they'll take your shit. Yeah, and it's like... Or if they uh, have, like, fish sniffing if dogs. If you get certain fish, like, if you get a certain f size halibut out here, you have to keep the halibut, you have to keep its tail and its head until you take it to, like, an authorized busher uh, who can, who can <clears> cut <throat> it up for you. There's a lot of shit you have to get around. Yeah, and around here, I know if you... When you catch a fish, you have to keep a piece of like a tag of skin on on the fish if yeah. you fillet it because yeah, you even if true. you don't do that they can take shit too like if you just have yeah. a regular ass fillet with no skin on it they can be like well this might be this or whatever and they'll find you that's why it's, fish talk. it's fish talk on the wanderers <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like fucking bob azumi right now do you fish <laughs> a lot out there or no i do a fair bit of fishing yeah i used to have a boat but i sunk it so you sunk it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to tell us about that? or? <laughs> well, me and a buddy purchased a boat, um, and we drove it around for like six months, and we parked it out on Vancouver Island. Uh, and we parked it in a bay for about two weeks, and it got uh, to a super low tide. And the way it got stuck out on its rope, it just kind of bore a hole in the bottom and then uh. never came back up. <laughs> uh, don't you do Dude, that man. stuff for work, like uh, the underwater welding and stuff like that? Yeah, I salvage like a fair bit of boats throughout the year. I do you ever commercial sink? Diver, so yeah, I, I, I did get my boat back personally, but did it you? Was, uh, it was a write-off for insurance. Yeah. Do you ever sink any boats, like with uh, with your work? Um, we don't sink any. The Coast Guard mainly takes care of that, which actually I just heard in the Canadian news that they're taking away their uh, their diving unit for the Coast Guard, which is, you know, they they, t they took away a big Coast Guard station out here a long time ago, and, Tr and Trudeau recently got it um, put back into service, but now they're taking away one of their big divisions of, like, their diving division, so, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully there will be more work like that. Yeah. Isn't it like an insane amount of money like to do a job for underwater welding or is that It costs it costs our clients a lot of money, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well that's good, you want that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to one day, you know, own an outfit like the one I worked for, so Yeah. They're um w back in the day, like when I first I, I had my scuba diving license too, just my uh junior one. I I was in scouts for a yeah. bit and then we did that. But um I was kind of always thinking about doing that because i like 
I miss scuba diving, but it would be sweet to make money. Like, is it a, like a bit safer now? Like, I yeah, know well, it used what to we be do kind is of really fucked. safe. And it's funny you mentioned that because I got my scuba ticket also in, in Scouts. Oh, yeah. And I was always into building shit. So mm-hmm. I thought, fuck, why don't I just try and weld and do this underwater at the same time? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, that's how it all sort of worked out. But it, it's not it's not dangerous in a sense. We wear huge, like, fucking fiberglass or stainless steel helmets. And you got a big air hose that goes down to you. And you can talk to people up top. And mm-hmm. it's all pretty safe, yeah. Yeah, I was terrified. Like, uh, when I was in Mexico, they uh, they asked me if I wanted to try scuba diving. And I'd have to do, like, all the lessons. And I don't know it would be, like if it was legit or not but mm-hmm. i was like they're like you can get you can die and shit and i was like well no see you later i'm gonna go <laughs> swim in the beach oh yeah they're <laughs> they're all right up front with us in scouts they're like yeah like they taught us all the precautions and stuff it's uh it's pretty intense i remember watching yeah, can, somebody almost die that's for sure um i remember um a buddy of mine his brother pretty much almost killed him underwater <laughs> it was oh wild. no he was like they're joking around. We're like 30 feet down. And he knocks his mask and his fucking oxygen out. And I'm like seeing <laughs> my buddy. He had to do like the maneuver where you like reach behind you and pull your cord up. And then it was, it was so yeah. intense. I was like, oh, man. Like there's like <laughs> I grabbed his mask or whatever and handed it to him. But there wasn't too much I could do. And then he like he told me when we got up, he like just caught enough air. He was like choking and like coughing and shit. That's and, crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, when shit goes south, it goes south real quick. That's for sure. Yeah, and like yeah, you don't have a lot of room for error down there. Yeah, no. no and when you're coming oh, up, like none. your lungs can fucking explode if you don't hum. You're supposed to like hmm as you come up because the um, the pressure, like light. Yeah, the air the air expands every time you come up. So mm-hmm. you know, if the deeper you are, the more it expands. And uh, like Jason said, a lot of times they'll take you max, uh, diving in Mexico, but you never go below. 33 feet which is the pressure we're at here just sitting in at sea level Mm -hmm. so there's actually not a whole lot of danger in that you can only you only expand your lungs like one time so it should be you're you're gonna make it you're you're fine with that Mm -hmm. but at like 160 feet your your lungs can expand like eight times their size and then that's when you run into big problems yeah and like the deeper you go, the less uh, the less faculties you have, and mm-hmm. I've seen videos where people are going down and then they just keep going down and going down because they kind of forget that yeah. they're going down and like they their people have died just like going so deep. Yeah, they don't some even pretty, realize. Uh, famous videos on on YouTube and stuff of people just going super deep and just dying. That's which is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's insane. How, what's the deepest you've gone? Uh, well, the deepest I ever go is 165 feet. That's pretty deep. So that's I'll crazy. be going to 165 feet on Monday, so that should be exciting. They have a lot of safety stuff in, in place for you guys, though, I, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just to get the insurance. Um, yeah, the insurance, well, it's expensive, right? And then WCB, the governing board out here for uh, safety work practices and regulations and shit like that they have so many regulations of equipment you have to have and uh, rules you have to follow and shit like that Mm -hmm. so what happens if they do in every like even what you guys do like let's say you go down and and you you start kind of losing your faculties what what happens then do they have something to pull you up like they don't pull you up immediately because that's dangerous too right yeah that's dangerous i mean when we're when we're just diving on normal air, which is always what we do, and you're at 160 feet, it's not that bad. It's like it's like you had four or five beers, maybe. Oh you really? Feel a little loopy, and your voice is super funny, and uh, it's not too too bad. You don't like lose your shit. That... Um, but if you did, it, it it can get bad. There's stories of people, you know, trying to take their helmets off underwater and stuff like that. That's wild. Yeah, there there is no like nothing in place for something like that for someone just panicking. Um, but as far as like how long we can stay down for and stuff we can do, there's all sorts of rules. Mm-hmm. And like, do you have any like uh, technology or anything down there that you can stay in contact with the people on top? 
Yeah, yeah. So we can talk into our helmet. Um, it's just like a bucket, essentially, you wear on your head, and then it sort of has uh, like what a fighter pilot would wear. Oh, okay. Piece that goes over your nose and mouth, and you can talk into that. Um, and then you can talk to everyone at top, and there's typically video on us too, so that when we, if you are fucked up and you're really deep, someone can say no, 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 like grab that bolt, not that one, or they can oh, sort yeah. of help you out a little bit. Everyone can see what you're doing. That's cool. So do they send like cameras down, like on those? Um, they kind of f- float through the water, or yeah, like an ROV. Typically, we don't work with them, but we have in the past, and yeah, they'll sit there and just watch you. That's so cool. That is cool. Yeah. So what um what else you got going on? I know you do some stuff with uh, Sirius Radio, and you got your own podcast out there. Yeah, I've been doing the radio thing for like four years now, and so I do three radio shows. We do uh, This Voice Life, which is a podcast, and that started like three years ago, <clears throat> and uh, that that grew into a serious radio show, and so we do essentially two shows under slightly different names. And the serious show is called uh, The Voice Boys Show. Super similar. Mm. And uh, that's every Saturday, 8 p.m. Pacific on Channel 103 for Sirius. And then I got my own show on iTunes and all that, uh, Root Studio Radio. Nice. Yeah, I've uh, I've listened to a few. Um, I've noticed, like I tried to get back uh, a couple months ago, I tried to get uh the voice boys show on yeah. google play but it like every episode was the same episode like it had a different title but i don't know if it was something happening happening for just temporarily like some technical difficulties they were having on google but like every i listened to one and then i was like oh i'll go to the next one and it was yeah. the exact same one but yeah, it, with a different title so there. yeah if you just go to this voice life.com you get the, the best of content i find yeah, I usually I like when I'm driving to work, I'll listen to Google Play. So I I don't. Do you really... listen to most of your shit just through your phone? Yeah, like I'm at home sometimes. I do it at home, but not not very often. Um, I'd say about ninety percent of the stuff I listen to is on my phone too. So yeah, it seems to, through the Google Analytics, I can see it's yeah ninety percent of people are listening on their phones, and it's. Half and half Apple or Google. Yeah, we we don't have too many people on Google Play for our show. All our stuff is uh, mainly iTunes and SoundCloud. And a bit of YouTube, YouTube. too. Oh, YouTube, yeah, we because we have the video. Mm-hmm. Oh, are you guys doing video at the same time? Yeah. yeah it's kind of like... That's cr- a good way to like, do it. Like a cross hack. Because, like, video... Yeah. Like, we can eventually branch off into other content and stuff too well like, we're actually gonna try that the, like today yeah we're gonna go we're going out to uh lake huron and we're gonna do some shit oh nice yeah so i dump some shit yeah like we were planning on like going on like hikes and stuff and i think that's what we're gonna start today nice that's a fucking good idea mm-hmm. yeah and uh, we're, when we were talking to j-rock he, he came up with a good idea of just like taking the camera across the country and like just getting drunk and yeah. getting on the via rail and just filming what did he call it uh, i can't remember but i'll have to go back it was a really good idea mm-hmm. fuck so hold on j-rock came up with this idea that you guys should travel across the country with a ca- with a camera yeah and get like it's funny we were was... just like kind of riffing and then he mm-hmm. was like well just like get your via rail pass and go across canada and Mm-hmm. Yeah. Start drinking and like film it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, what a great idea. No, yeah, I've I've been kind of like thinking little, about stuff like that. A slice of information that you can take and run with. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that was a fucking awesome episode you guys had. Yeah, it's yeah, thanks, it was man. so surreal. Yeah, that was <laughs> real, real surreal. Yeah. Was... Um, what did you, did you guys just reach out to him through Twitter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how we yeah, got all our guys to, so far. Seems to be the way to do it. Yeah. yeah, like I ask, I ask so many people. It's retarded. Like if you go to our our Twitter feed, you can see how many people I ask, and <laughs> I'll get like some likes, and I very like it's like a five percent success rate, but oh, still, yeah. Yeah. you know, like I I got it's J Rock Botticello who worked for Fox News, and we got that Bobby Del Rio guy and yeah. Rick Padel and. 
Yeah, no, that's fucking wicked, guys. You guys are doing awesome. And we got I'm glad some... that there's another. Uh, that is, are you guys the only Elmira podcast? Yeah, I it, think so. From from what the <laughs> nice. pe- the people that we know for sure, but there might be <laughs> other ones. One I, know. I know there's some around like Waterloo Kitchen. Oh stuff, yeah, like, for sure. But um, yeah. As as far as it goes for like people we know and like grew up with, like, I don't I don't think anybody else is doing anything yet. But I do think this will eventually branch off and like inspire other people to like do stuff. Well, like I said, when we're doing the extra content for YouTube, we're gonna be bringing in all the other people right because mm-hmm. like w- in the past all all of our friends are saying like we should have a youtube channel blah 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 we could totally do it but then nobody does anything mm-hmm. and i feel that right now we have a platform that we can start launching that mm-hmm. with our friends and actually kind of inspire them to do something yeah they yeah, can start to build on some shit yeah exactly it's good that someone's doing something there uh, did you guys film anything from the Maple Syrup Festival? We did, but we haven't used it yet. Yeah. I, I ended up just getting really drunk and, like, <laughs> not using it. Because we had this plan to take our camera out and go out and do it, but then there were so many people and it was so bulky. And Well, we didn't even have our camera yet. We were just um, doing We had a phone. camera, though. We had the DSLR. Well, yeah, that's true. But, no, we, we, didn't, even, <laughs> we didn't even bring that out. And then... <laughs> We ended up just using our phones, and we we talked to like Chet and a bunch of people, and yeah, it it didn't really pan out. Like we should have done something <laughs> with it, but by the, by this t- like it's next a little year, late now. We we're definitely gonna do some more. We um, were thinking, that all takes a little bit of planning. Yeah, that was back when we still kind of were feeling it. It was still in the feeling out process, so yeah. We're just, still kind of in that process, but like you know, it's picking up momentum. We're coming through a little bit, but mm-hmm. it was more. It was more so just like getting up off our ass and just doing something, right? So, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's it's nice. I find in a way just to talk into a fucking microphone. I can just say whatever I want on here. Yeah. And you know, people yeah. can listen or not, and I can say whatever I want. I mean, so much like there's the people we have a channel with on. Uh, Sirius Radio is everyone who's been kicked off F- FM and AM. <laughs> um, like we're 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 in there with the biggest shows that have been kicked off the air, mm-hmm. and they these people say some crazy shit, have done the craziest shit on the air, and I find it's just a good way to to say to say and do whatever you want, which I well, I think is really fucking important these days. No, for sure, <laughs> and the thing with um, radio like FM is they have big corporations to kind of curate their well, content yeah, they and have they, they have like standards to, to live by. Whereas we are, we make our own standards on this. So. We're our own boss, right? So like Absolutely. nobody's going to come down and be down our throats telling us what to say and what there are podcast networks though. So well, that's to an thing. extent that that does work or that does come into play. Mm-hmm. But at this point, not for us and, not for you, probably. No, I mean, I've thought we've tossed around the idea of starting our own network, um, just with a bunch of Canadian podcasts. But you know, we're still looking into it. There's a lot of a lot of moving parts to doing that, though. Yeah, it's still a very, it's it's growing more these days too, especially because you know not everybody has a radio walking around, but they do have a phone walking around, and you could just stream or download and just podcasts save time really like yeah. when you're driving you can listen to a podcast or whatever you can you know catch up on your world get information or even just like you can learn stuff from audiobooks and even and stuff like that like our, yeah our time yeah, is so uh, valuable there's so much out there i mean and I, don't, I believe that they haven't quite broken to their full potential yet no not even close i think so. that um our like news organizations and stuff um they're really struggling to get real news across, and I think that podcasts eventually can move into a main source of news. Mm-hmm. Well, especially with the power of live, like I could go on Facebook Live right now and have a breaking story of something happening, right? Like, can you imagine if yeah. somebody was f- fucking Facebook living when nine eleven happened or something. Like that would. Well, have been there like, was like a ton of people with like, video. Obviously, out and, yeah, but like 
Yeah. Well, everyone has the power now to be a reporter, which is, yeah, which like, is fine because the people, the talking heads on Fox News and MSNBC are the exact same fucking people. Well, yeah, they're all they yeah. care about is ratings, and I, I yeah. hate that. Like, I hate that the news, say. the news used to be a tool, right? It used oh, to, yeah. it used to keep the government in check, you know, like the fourth estate. And yeah. it was, it was a tool and it was a, it was a great tool and it worked wonderfully until this like explosion of media came through and now all they care about is, is ratings. And so mm-hmm. it's all this sensationalism and all this like fear mongering and stuff like that just to get people to watch so they can sell ads. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's not right because now they're getting into the pockets of, of the politicians and, and so people are, it's just corrupted completely and fully corrupted. Mm-hmm. Totally. And I, I still, I still log on to the CKCO website from time to time. And what used to be our homegrown fucking news network is now just like, uh, North Korea fucking missiles and Trump this, Trump that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I get that uh, stuff needs terrible. to be reported, but there's other shit happening in the world. Yeah. And there's sap flowing right now. It just sucks because now all, all these news uh, channels and all these networks are just kind of focusing on the tragedy du jour. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I agree does need to be reported on. But they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, totally. Well, I feel like even even know, the sp- Young Turks when they started, they were it was good, it was objective, and now it's just a fucking steaming pile of shit. Well, it's just uh, yeah. what I find yeah, funny. Shows, I mean, shows like that have such big corporate corporate sponsors. It gets hard at a oh, point yeah. in time, especially when you monetize your own show. Yeah, but just. Even the shit that's been happening this last week or whatever, all of a sudden everybody becomes a fucking economist, like talking about all this wage shit that's coming yeah, up. Yeah, they're like, pros. And oh they're, yeah. All of a sudden now they don't want the minimum wage because someone said it's gonna like be bad. And See, here's the price jobs. of milk. Like <laughs> I swear, if somebody fucking worship. tells me the price of milk one more goddamn time. Like, See, the <laughs> r- raising costs of of goods and services isn't the problem of raising minimum wages. The problem is layoffs. Companies are going to look at an unskilled worker who's making $15. Anyway. I know, but it's going to happen more. Oh, yeah. That's what you have to worry about is layoffs. But yeah. when you have a good, responsible government, they can they can plan for that. They can put social structure in place so that those people can have, uh, like, Unemployment, or they can have money coming in to give them time. Yeah, that's, and in demand. that's what like, I mean. They uh, can have like pathway programs or people don't want action progress. plans like to, that's to put people into school, like. which is what Ontario is doing. Mind you, Ontario is putting us in an insane amount of debt to do it, mm. mm-hmm. but it's happening. Like we're getting free tuition for students who, in families that make less than fifty thousand dollars, which is going to be—it's going to pay dividends in in a couple of years. Free drugs for anybody under twenty-five. Yeah, fucking there's Ooh, free drugs. Yeah, Shit. like prescription yeah. drugs. Woo! Oh, back. prescription. Oh, no. It's, yeah, but no, like <laughs> that's the thing. Um, I just find it funny. Like lately, you'll see like this top story bust out and then everybody talks about it and then just forget about it a week later and it's just like the same shit happening over and over again. I know and it's unbelievable and then like you have all the terrorist attacks and oh yeah it's tragic but there's yeah instead of sitting there and crying about it let's do something about it don't report on them that's what they want like they're they're wanting to propagate themselves so that's why they Mm -hmm. do it Mm -hmm. yeah and you get we get to look at it from our own point of view luckily we live in I mean Luckily, fuck, we're 25 year old white males that live in Canada. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a pretty it good gets deal. It's so hard to look at a, a life from a different point of view. Well, not only that, but it's fucking 400 trillion to one to become a human being. Like, what about that? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Another yeah. thing I was looking at is everyone's complaining about all this terrorist attack on Western civilization. But they pay no mind to the Middle Eastern attacks on themselves. Like it far, like heavily outweighs the amount the amount of damage that that they've caused to the Western world. That 
Oh, absolutely. Like the, the infighting and the Muslim on Muslim terrorism is huge, and that doesn't yeah, get just, reported on. Just heard of a bomb attack like three days ago, where like eighty people were killed and three hundred wounded. Yeah, and it stuff like that might get like a byline or something, or like a little mention on on the news or in the newspaper. Yeah, but like if you have like an Ariana Grande show that gets blown up, everybody <laughs> talks about it. Yeah, like everybody. And, I mean that that was I think that was a special case. Well, it's you know? it's horrific, but well, what I'm just saying, next, where's boys? the balance? Like, fucking next, it's gonna be a celebrity actually fucking gets blown up. And like, yeah, that's going to be what changes the fucking protocols of everything, right? You know what I mean? Like, it, it's a weird perspective that, you know, the Western culture has. Like, we have all these celebrities and stuff on such a high horse. As, as soon as one of them go, it's going to change the whole momentum and the whole perspective of this whole fucking thing on, like, everybody's Well, it's not list. like we're not worried about it. We are. We are worried about it, but it's just right now, and that, for all the shit that's going on, like, in, across the borders and everything like we're just at a time where there's so much shit happening but so what i think right now is good stuff happening is the u.s has something that they have to deal with right now immediately and that's trump like you gotta they gotta do something about that and they are like he's got a special investigation going on and but that i think is first and foremost because that can just he like he's unpredictable and he could just cause so much more damage mm-hmm. he's he's dangerous it's tough it's tough to talk about about trump because yeah he's a dangerous psychopath i don't i don't know if impeachment's the right path and uh in this in, in my opinion i think we just let him serve his four years and well if we patch up what whatever bad he's done after that if he does something worth impeachment for sure i mean bill clinton lied about sleeping with a girl and they impeached him for it mm-hmm so why can't we impeach Trump for firing the FBI director for not putting, what was it? He if, asked them to stop investigating Trump, we're, him. We're left with Mike Pence, aren't we? I would take Mike Pence. Better is that a hundred times over Trump. Ah, oh, I don't know. I, th- I think like, they're both psychos. Well, he's Mike Pence is more of a kind of like a puppet than anything. He's more of a politician, that's for sure. At least he has some experience. Whereas Trump is just a loose cannon. Yeah. I know they're bringing the reins in on on him a little bit, but like when you just willy nilly blast a Syrian airfield after saying you're not going to join the war, like what the fuck is that? Yeah, we're not going to join. We're not going to do anything. And then the next day they fucking blow up an airfield. And he signs, you know, executive orders every day. I heard he just, uh, Joined the proud nations of Nicaragua and Zimbabwe in saying that uh, climate change isn't man made. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh, it's insane. What a fucking idiot. Oh, I think man. I think that has, you know, de- that's just sort of the deregulation side of things. He wants to keep the coal plants and stuff open. And that's the thing. He coal- calls it clean coal. Coal yeah. plants, the amount of employment that they they make that they they're generating is nothing if they if they just switch to solar energy. Yeah. Chain, switching there, there over to so solar it's going to create so many more jobs because you have to make the switch and that'll that'll take 15 to 20 years. And where you're switching the infrastructure if you have the money to do it, do it because then you're going to generate you're going to cut off so much overhead. You're gonna you're gonna generate more energy than you can. What was it? China or something has their first floating solar farm. They just have fucking solar farms just floating out in the ocean. That's yeah, a good idea. I don't know because the ocean's pretty reckless. Like, it's it's a well, they have systems in place. Like, chew up everything. For all that. Like you know, by the time we gotta clean up the Pacific, like it's there's a they have patch a fucking of garbage. Giant three fucking times. plastic sucking machine that that yeah. kid like we're in progress of. There's so much good shit happening, but at the same time... But then you have Trump signing orders to keep coal burning and stuff like that, so Well, whatever. he's he's so more... Like, he's looking at it like his business stance, like, saying, like, well, this Paris Agreement, like, fucking China's not... They're the leaders in pollution, nowhere close to what America fucking p- produces, and they're not even in this agreement. Like, 
America can't have economical growth because of this thing that they're sacrificing trillions of dollars. Like I listened to his speech and everything and like it, some of it makes sense, but it's like he denies other things. Like we have effect on climate change, which is bullshit. We do like there's shit going on in the world that like obviously shit's changing. Yeah. yeah, I can totally see it from test. Like I just watched this video, this guy who was living in, um, some well, the seed vault it was called flooded. Gothic, and he was uh, uh, yeah, the seed vault vault flooded. I heard that. <laughs> like what? they specifically put that up in uh, what was it, Smal- Smialland or whatever, or Yaland. Yeah, it's like this crazy northern island that they thought would be fine, and then all of a sudden it's melting and flooding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like the housing of the only like original seeds of pretty much every crop on Earth. That's like our fucking. That's our ark, man. That. If ever something like insane, like another asteroid hits and kills all the plants, the seed vault is there for that, mm-hmm. so that when it clears, we can just replant everything. But they they put more effort into you know storing the fucking rock and roll memorabilia in some fucking mountain in Nevada or something. Like who gives a shit about that stuff? <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Oh, we want Jimi Hendrix guitar to stay safe, like. Yeah. What is exactly. it gonna do when there's no fucking sun? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to burn it. Yeah, nice firewood. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh, the world, fuck. but how is just? Sorry, go ahead. The world is just like there's so much going on that like I feel like we know way too much information for our own good because like, that is it's just there's so much going on like the world is so big. Like, so many different yeah. cultures all trying to fight for, no, I'm right. No, this God is right. No, there is no God. Well, no, I'm trying. Is, like, like, I'm I'm making a solid effort to kind of enclose my world. Yeah. So that everything that doesn't, I ha- has no direct impact on my life, I try not to think about. Right. And it's hard, but it, it's working. Like, my pos- my stance on life has become extremely positive, and, and it's done wonders for me for the, in the last year mm-hmm. or so so well that's kind of what like literally as soon as i saw that trump got elected in the, the morning after because i didn't even stay up and wait for the results i'm like okay time to focus on my own life yeah. like i ended up getting my own apartment fucking doing other shit like getting yeah. this going like all this other good shit and it's just because i've switched my whole perspective and instead of focusing on the negative things i focus on the positive things in life like how much we actually fucking have control of what we can say and stuff, and we still do have free speech, and everybody and their mother, whether they realize it, is a media company, because, like, we fucking post shit to Facebook, whether it's a picture of our food or whatever, like, that is a form of media, and we all have the power to say whatever we want, like, whether or not it's true or if it's false or whatever. I don't know what it is, but there's, there's always the fact that people focus more in on the negative than the positive. Well, it's part of our evolution. Like, look at, like... Well, we've, we've only we've covered just this, had this... Co- we've, like, we've covered this before, where yeah. it's like we're we're looking more for the danger in, in a situation because that's an evolution trait that we've had and it's kept us alive. It's not only that, but, like, when you constantly complain about everything, like, your brain is literally wired to focus I on the negative things. I don't think things. that's true. Like, it, it doesn't physically change. Your it, brain I, is I neuroplastic. To some like, degree. It doesn't, it's, yeah, you're talking about neuroplasticity. Yeah. It doesn't, your brain doesn't physically change because you're focusing on, no, on negative thoughts. the way thoughts. you're wired to think about things. Yeah, it's not a physical not... change though. It's, it's, I know what you're talking about and I know who posted that and it's, it's, there's grounds to it, but it's psychological, mm-hmm. right? Your, your brain's not physically changing. It's just the way that your brain works that's changing. Mm-hmm. Well, I, like, other than that, yeah, like you're gonna have a negative way. impact. Like you're gonna have a negative outlook on life if you just focus on negativity. Mm-hmm. That's clear. If you walk around punching people in the face, sooner or later someone's gonna punch you in the face. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if you walk around and you're helping people, people are gonna want to help you. It's just a product of an, your environment. Yeah. So if you wake up and you're like, oh, what kind of crazy shit happened today? You're gonna th- st- you're gonna think like that. It's just the way it works. I don't know, we all grew up in a, not a toxic environment, but one that has an effect on how we all are nowadays, that's for sure. I grew up in Elmira for fuck's sakes. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's wild. Like we got no, we didn't get exposure to anything. We didn't, you know. I don't. We, we didn't know a... anyone who ever went to fucking Mexico or anything like that. So we were fucking fifteen or you know, whatever. Yeah. No. We like we were like a sheltered town for sure, and not diverse at all. And mm-hmm. I was raised like that. And when when we get to high school and I start seeing people of other races, I'm like, I've never seen that. Like going to yeah. Well, yeah. That's crazy we went like you went to saint Teresa's with me i don't even remember having washed like <laughs> any other race of person in that school no i think there was one guy there was a spanish kid one for like two years or something i remember i but... think when we were in grade eight there was a, a black kid in like grade two or something yeah and everyone was like holy shit it was it was a mecca wasn't it i don't know if it was a mecca Mecca went to the other school. Like, there was a oh, couple, school. like they were uh, younger. Not us. in our school. Like me and Mark went to St. Teresa's. Oh, right. Yeah, there was no black kids growing up. No, and like no. I, kn- I didn't see any, like, growing up very often. And that's funny too. It's not like I'm not a racist or anything. It's just we weren't around them. We weren't exposed to it. And no. I have no hey, problem not at all. about race <laughs> or fucking sexuality or anything. It's just. If you're a good person, I yeah. respect you. <laughs> yeah, I don't like assholes, that's for sure. Yeah. That's the thing, uh, right? Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, I just we just had to learn to to accept it all later in life and I think we're all inbred and some some people are still inbred with the idea that uh, not everyone's as equal as they think. Mm-hmm. Well, the the craziest thing I I think is we the amount of things that we have in common to like for racist people when they when they think that they are higher than than the other races the amount of things you have in common with the other people is staggering it's only yeah. about a 2 to 3% difference i'm talking like physical physiological and like uh biological you're the same the only difference is really come in your culture and the color of your skin yeah so and the same goes for everything across the board. So I don't. It's just these little small differences that people pick out. And yeah, that's, people, people just nitpick now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand it. They're the you're the same species. Like you're the exact same. You just have subtle differences. I find it weird how like we're all the same species, but there's seven billion people all having their own different perception of what we call this reality it's just like you know we all hover around these ideas and like build these structures and ideologies and stuff and it's just like that's culture yeah it's culture but it's just there's so many clashes of culture the way now. what it's i'm just, trying to say is that you have a german shepherd that german shepherd's not going to discriminate discriminate against a yellow lab yeah they're still going to mm-hmm. play together yeah i don't understand why like where this came from I know that I think the it's cultural been difference for but, centuries, I think. <laughs> oh, it's been around since the beginning of time. <laughs> yeah. Like the beginning of humans, the fir- the f- the first thing that happened when humans were introduced is that was the extin- the extinction of the Neanderthals. Yeah. So it's in- it's bred right into our blood, but like we're at a point now where that doesn't serve a- an evolutional an purpose. Uh, yeah. And we're at, you better believe if aliens come down that we'll be fucking enslaving them. They'll be working for us. Yeah, I don't think they're coming though. I think they're out there, <laughs> but it the the distance is just so so drastic that it's impossible to without yeah, I to, making uh, a lot of like Neil deGrasse Tyson and that guy's pretty smart. It's foolish to believe there's nothing else out there, but oh, there definitely is. Yeah, like it, there has to be. If it can happen here, it can happen somewhere else. For sure. And it's fun to think that you can, like, warp to other planets and stuff like that. But realistically, the only way we would get to another planet is by building a giant-ass ship and colonizing on the ship and just heading out. Right? Yeah. And yeah, taking I've... hundreds of years to get there. Yeah, and there's. I guess they're trying to fucking launch a little stamp to Mars or something, though, with a laser really fast. Well, you can send, like, messages and stuff. Like the the relay of information is definitely faster than like shipping something. Yeah, physical objects. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
Like, even the closest star, I think, is, like, four and a half light years away. And if you, if we were to load up a ship of people and just head out with a constant acceleration, it would take, like, a couple hundred years to get there. And that's that's not even guaranteeing that there's suitable planets over there. We know that there's one, there's one that, that's potential at the nearest star. But, like, let's say you do it, you get there, and then, oh, fuck, we can't live here. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you do? (laughs) You're fucked. It's fun fun to think that maybe they're over there, there's people walking on their hands. Yeah, it's fun, but it's just not not real to think that we're ever going to get there, meet them face to face. Maybe our kids' kids. We could, by chance, like, we have, what was it, the Voyager? The Voyager's just pieced out right now. It's like exiting our solar system. So maybe fucking millions of years from now, it comes into contact with another civilization. That's the mm-hmm. only thing I think that we can hope for. And then they get mm-hmm. this this satellite, and then they look at us, and then they're like, oh, well, they're gone because the sun will have engulfed us by then. Mm-hmm. Haven't they sent, like, time capsules out with, like, fucking Bon Jovi records and shit? Well, that's what they did on the Voyagers and stuff. They put, uh, like, a golden record, and it showed, like, our anatomy, and it showed how our language is and, like, uh, some math. It showed a map of our of our solar system, a picture of the Earth. And Bon Jovi. <laughs> I don't know if it was Bon Jovi. It was someone. It was, like, a representation of our culture. I can't oh, yeah. remember who it was. Space is cool. I, I was going to go see uh, Chris Hadfield this weekend. I tried to get him on the show, but he wanted nothing to do with it for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be relentless, man. Like, I went after uh, J-Rock a few times before I got him. So I'm, I want to get Survivor Man on. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, I've been trying for that for a while, dude. Les Stroud? Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. I've been trying for, like, Mike Rowe and... Yeah, uh, me too. Tom Green and shit. Yeah, Mike Rowe is sweet. He has like the yeah. ten minute podcast where he just talks about working. Yeah, Have you seen it's the, fucking uh, cool. the way I heard it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. No, it's not him working. It's him. No, I know, but it's like it's just like ten minute podcast. Yeah, yeah. He like tells little stories, and it turns out to be like some big company that you wouldn't think that's how it got started. Yeah, like the story of Netflix and shit like that. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, Mike Rowe's badass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck. I mean, this has been uh, quite the little talk here. I think we've covered just about everything. Oh yeah, yeah we're at everything about... in the universe. Oh yeah, it was a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we uh, we gotta head out to the cottage and everything. So I think uh, this is where we're gonna cut it off. Hell yeah, dude! Well, fucking thanks for having me on. I'll be in Elmira in a couple of weeks. So yeah, That's man, correct. we should get together and do Please something. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe actually have you in person in the, in the show. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. In right. the studio. Yeah, the <laughs> like studio. YouTube. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> My little All right, game. guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. All right. Take care, guys. Later. See ya. And I got to piss. Oh. <laughs> Randy. Randy. Holy fuck. I piss. Oh. 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 All right, thanks, Randy. Thanks, Randy, buddy. <laughs> so we just talked to uh, so Mark Murdoch, the Murmur. Yeah. Uh, he was He's a friend of mine and Collins from uh, Elmira here. Oh, he's out in BC. Up here. Get he's out in cozy. BC. He's a pretty big proponent of, of podcasts. And yeah, he he's got his, his own show. He's yeah. on Sirius Radio. He's killing it. Yeah, he is killing it. Uh, he's... An underwater underwater diver, and it was an awesome interview. I didn't even realize he was an underwater diver until he like brought it up. Yeah, or you brought it up, didn't you? I think so. But I actually considered doing that a long time ago. But he well, underwater, said it's not even like underwater that welder. Dangerous. All divers are underwater divers. Underwater <laughs> underwater welders. <laughs> yeah, he welds underwater. Yeah, no, like I always heard that it was just super dangerous, and he kind of reaffirms it and. In the interview that it's not... I was terrified of diving. It's 
I never did it's it. It's pretty scary, but like it's also it's, it's awesome. I'd probably do it now. It's awesome. Well, I'm, I'd probably have to lose some weight, but yeah. I've saw I'd some, like to. I saw some bigger guys yeah. like fucking doing it. Like it's not I'd like to get a little more breath in me. Yeah. That's the thing, right? I don't have uh an obscene amount of breath. I can hold my breath for like 40 seconds. Are you a chest breather? A chest breather? Mhm. Most yeah. like 90% of people are. I think so. What what else is there? You the way we're supposed to breathe is from the diaphragm up to the chest. Kind of feel it in your back? Like picture a water pitcher where the bottom of the pitcher is like pretty much people say like breathe into your balls. It's like the lowest point is your diaphragm first. I so can like, feel it in my back when I breathe. I don't know if that yeah. means anything. Cuz when be. I like when I got sick a long time ago and I I cough, it pulled all my back muscles at the bottom here. Mm. But whatever. It might be just from um, the way it healed or it just might have that held tension in there. I don't know. Anyways, it was a great interview. We enjoyed it. Yeah. Stan, did you use all the damn toilet paper again? Ah, oh, crap! What? What do you guys want? We said we only used what was in the kit. You got nothing on us. You got nothing on us. Dad, they aren't here for that. Oh. Hi, I'm Randy Marsh. All right, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Little yeah. uh, difficulty there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing on us. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, so we did our album review. Uh, we kind of went back to the roots. Back in my day, our music was better. Not this garbage the youngins listen to. Warbur, warbur, warbur. I wanted to to go back to yeah, it was the albums that really made made us listen to metal. <laughs> That's my dog. Yeah, she's a metalhead too. Yeah. For sure. What was the uh, first album that you listened to? Nothing. Nothing. I don't know. There is an answer to that question. You're like, Nissa, (laughs) you ever heard death metal? (laughs) 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 Anyways, Nissa, you are just obnoxious right now. She's ready to go to the beach, bro. I know. Yeah. So the album that I... the. I listened to a lot of the emo screamo stuff for a while. So the album that really, really broke me into metal was uh, "Frail Words Collapse" by Asley Dying. Yeah, and I, it took me a bit to actually f- dig in and figure out which one really made me a metalhead. Like I, you know, grew up with Ozzy, Marilyn Manson, Rob Zombie, fucking just stuff like that, Pantera, and then I got into like I, I play guitar, so I, I started listening to a lot of like Steve Vai, Paul Gilbert, like all those guitarists oh, yeah. and everything, and it was just like this slow progression into like death metal and all this stuff. But um, the band that really hit it home for me is when I was in high school and I was trying to learn more metal songs than the guitar, and uh, "Laid to Rest" by um, Lamb, Lamb of God. God was shown to me, and I just ever since then was just like. The double kicks and everything, and just f- yeah, the the screaming and just the whole, they're more groove metal, death metal kind of like they well, have yeah, their own sub like, genre, like like all of them do. But that yeah, was really so the band, um, Ashes of the Wake, um, Lamb was of God the was the album. Yeah, after listening to that whole album too, and I was just like, holy fuck! Here we go! Here we go! That's a that's what I felt like when I was listening to like uh, Alexis on Fire and stuff like yeah. that. And, um, I was always progressively gearing towards more heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. So I started listening to like, um, uh, like still remains and stuff like that. And it always kept a little light. Like it wasn't terribly heavy, the stuff that I was listening to, but it was always moving towards heavy. And then all of a sudden a friend of mine in high school said, uh, if like, I always said, I liked the screaming in the music. So he, he suggested, why don't you just listen to Asley Dying? It's all screaming and it's like heavy. And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And it just... There's brief parts where it wasn't screaming. But well, he's, it, it they're just... still metalcore, so they have yeah. like the choruses here and there. But like when they're heavy, they're heavy. And it's like 95% mm-hmm. super screaming. Oh, yeah. So that just opened the floodgates for me. And then I was just like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. And I literally <laughs> remember going home and being like, 
on my computer and I'm just sitting there and I'm downloading as much metal as I possibly can. I'm like going I, yeah, online yeah. and I'm like, what is metal? Metal bands, <laughs> super heavy metal bands. Yeah. And then I just downloaded this whole slew and that's when I started getting into like Kalma. And, and it's funny because right after Bodum. you did that is when I started getting the metal. And the, you're just like, come over with your iPod. And yeah. And I we loaded, got like into the same band. I loaded all my music onto your iPod. Yeah. I was like for four years, I listened to the same fucking yeah, shit. I didn't. I didn't update for a while after that. But there was so much good shit. Like, yeah, I still listen to all that stuff. Like, I update my library, like my my listening habits, maybe once a year. Yeah, no, I maybe I actually just started getting back into listening to metal again because I was just just strictly listening to podcasts and like yeah. audiobooks, all that shit. But I I. F- physically and mentally feel better when i listen to metal so as like just that album like, it's not perfect no and that's you can the best part about it though you like, can really tell that they were in a state of flux as if they were going to move towards the more melodic stuff or that that really unstructured hardcore style like where they're doing like the like yeah. that really hardcore sound mm-hmm. i'm really happy that they moved towards the more melodic stuff because like the next album, I think was Shadows Are Security. It was amazing, and then they had uh, An Ocean Between Us, which was awesome. That's the one with the Sound of Truth, and mm-hmm. I'm really happy that they moved towards that rather than going more towards like what Norma Jean does. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, great album. My favorite song is probably Forever. That's a really good one. Or yeah. El- Elegy. I actually, I like that one, and what is it, 94? 94 hours. 94 hours, yeah. Yeah. I remember hearing that, at like, I've seen them live, and they played that song, and I didn't even realize it was from that album, and it was, like, the first song on the album. So. Yeah, they're big, they're big in, like, uh, into 94 hours and forever, and Elegy were, like, the big ones on that one. Mm-hmm. So what did you think overall? I thought it was good overall, um... Like you said, it's not perfect, but that's kind of what I like about it. Like the, the production was good, but it wasn't su- like nowadays. It's just the production value yeah. is just ridiculous. One problem I had is they had way too much emphasis on the bass drum. Mm-hmm. Like it's overwhelming. I feel like I remember seeing Lamb of God and the emphasis on like the bass in general was way way overpowering yeah. it just like totally ruined me but no i i like that album a lot i actually listened to it twice and um makes me want to like listen to the like more as i lay dying because they were kind of one of the bands i skipped over and my progression of metal and everything oh we lost our light wait where's he going now you don't ever catch the dragon dad no no i said i am your father put it back on Mom, you get Dad out of here. Randy, thanks for uh, bringing us back here. We had another technical difficulty. Uh, I think we can just leave that in. Well, I already introduced him. So. Well, yeah, might as well put it. Yeah, thanks, R- buddy. Randy, thank you. <laughs> Are we gonna? Do we want to fix it or no? Uh, no. Well, we're almost done anyway. So. Yeah, it's not that bad. No. We'll just know for next time. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah. Anyways, we'll, we'll shut it off in between. Yeah, like when we're not doing stuff. So, anyway, it's been about a solid hour already. We just, uh, well, what did you think about Lamb of God? I, see, initially when I first put the album on, I was like, okay, I remember liking it. I was like, this is, I remember liking it. And then I remember as it went on why I fell out of love with them. Because it's just so... Like, they have their good songs, like Omerta mm-hmm. and Laid to Rest. But everything was just so similar mm-hmm. and so... Predictable. Predictable. And, like... I know. I, and I, his I, his vocals on that first album, especially, were so unbelievably underwhelming that... Like, I don't want to hate on it, because I loved it when it came out, but I don't know what it is. It just... It just now. wore down on me after yeah after I found all this other really yeah. really original metal 
and then I started reala- realizing how generic Lamb of God really was. Mind you, there are great songs that I do love, like like I said, o- Omerta and Laid to Rest, and like Vigil is on a different album and stuff like that. I, there are still songs that I'll go back to that I like, but overall, I'm probably not ever. I'm not gonna be excited to go see Lamb of God or their new shit is nothing to talk about. Yeah, kind of. I tried to listen to it because what? Like they're great. Like they're talented. It's just I kind of got sick of it and. Yeah, nothing to talk, like nothing for me to talk about because I'm just not interested. In it. But like, people love Lamb of God still, and I've nothing against. I get them. it. Like they're good, but it's just not. They're good for at what me they so do. Much, yeah. But I just can't. Even in their new stuff, it sounds like their old stuff just rehashed, and it's like, remember that time we went, da down Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Or, it was like They do thing. put on a good live show. Oh, fuck yeah. They're great live. That's... I'll give them that. It's awesome. I've seen them so many times that it's it's just not in the cards anymore. I'd, like, if they were at a festival, maybe I'd swing by and see them, but I'm not going to go out and buy a Lamb of God ticket. Because generally people, they don't support bands. Like, they might support, like, Tool or, like, huge bands like that. But I am so upset that I missed that. Yeah. But the tickets sold out in, like, 15 fucking minutes. It was yeah. stupid. And then there were some people towards the end, like, selling them. Nissa, you're a whiner. For, like, the same price. They weren't scalping or whatever, but I wish I would have hopped on that. And just oh, well. Went. Um, so Our buddies didn't even get to sit with each other. They were just like... I didn't know that. Josh and Higgins. They got two separate seats? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> He's like, either get. it's two separate seats or no seats at all. And they're like, well... I can't That's funny. This tool, so. They should have like asked someone, maybe, to switch. Who knows? I don't think they're too worried about it. Yeah. They didn't need to hold hands during the show. Yeah. <laughs> too, bit, too busy fucking <laughs> hailing, hailing Satan. It's not like you can have a conversation or anything. Anyways, what's with the horns, man? Like, is it just Hail Satan? No, that so it comes from Ronnie James Dio. Yeah, and Ronnie James Dio. I think the story is that his mother used to say that this is like a curse, right? So you, the devil's in you, right? So he just adopted that and started doing that. Isn't it weird though? Like. It's permeated through a whole culture of people. Like it's a symbol. It is a symbol, but yeah, it's literally it's, it, it's the, li- the it's metal literally community fucking... is so close knit to the fact where you, if you're in a crowd of people and you see another dude with a metal shirt on, you're like instantaneously Drawn friends to, to yeah. that with that guy or that girl, and you're like, oh my god, that band's sick, and they're like, your band's sick too, man. That's why I love wearing metal shirts. Yeah. I, I was going through the grocery store the other day. It's like, this guy's fucking just stalking shit. He's like, yo, nice gold Jewish shirt. And he's just like nonchalant. Stuff like that throws I, me too. I was just like, I remember going to a, yeah, we to, a with gold Jewish and shit. to a movie once and I was wearing an Ensafirum shirt and the dude selling me popcorn was just, I was just like in the mi- mindset of going to a movie. Yeah. Like I wasn't even thinking about music and he's just like, what's your favorite album? I'm like, what? Like I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, "Oh shit, yeah, I don't know the first one." <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Anyway. Anyways, that was the album review. Gr- good launch pads. Anyways, uh, Lamb of God, I used to love them. They're great. Good, uh, good band. Yeah, just as not. I, I just grew dying, out of them. I feel like I still like as I die. I just need to. I actually did start listening to a shitload of them. Like I know the guy's a bit of a plug, Tim Lambesis, because of what he did. Yeah. Tried to get his wife killed, but he made, made good music. One of the best death metal fucking bands and then ever, and then just grew titties in jail. <laughs> <laughs> they they gave he was on steroids. Please don't hire Hitman. Yeah, on us for making fun of your tits. They gave him. Uh, he was on steroids, so when he went into jail, he couldn't take them anymore, and I guess it throws your hormones. Oh, he's off. suing them though. Yeah, like, he's getting a settlement. Yeah. So, so they took away his drugs. So. Like the the drugs that suppress that, so he well, it's tits. a when you take steroids and what a place and shit, to grow tits with your, in um, jail, testosterone like you can't produce it yourself anymore. That's like the worst place to grow tits. Yeah, 
I just the worst. But he's but pretty he, jacked. Yeah, he so would have killed think he everybody. Got, yeah, I don't think. He got <laughs> Anyways, if anything, he was the one fucking, and then yeah. and then that would just he be even more traumatizing yeah. to the person. It's like this guy has tits. <laughs> fucking me. But yeah, no. All right. Uh, so yeah, album review is done. Uh, we're gonna move into uh, our review of the movie Wonder Woman. So so if, right now, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. If you don't want to spoil, get spoiled for Wonder Woman. This is the end of the show for you. Yeah. So if you've seen the show. Or you seen the movie if and you, you want to... If you watch the movie or you don't care about getting spoiled or you want to hear b- uh, about a bunch of shit about the movie and you're okay with it, then just keep listening. But other than that, this is it for those of you who don't want to get spoiled for Wonder Woman. So thanks for watching. You can check us out on Twitter at The Wanderers Pod or at The Wanderers Podcast on Facebook or YouTube. Yeah, don't, for hit, don't forget to hit that like. It really helps us out. And share, share, share. Yeah. So thanks for watching and... See you later. Randy, take them out and uh, bring them back. Yeah. If, you, if they're coming. I don't know. And just like that, I left everything. I dropped out of high school. See ya. I said goodbye to my girlfriend. See ya. And I left my family. See ya. All right. All right. So Welcome back for those of you who stayed with us. Wonder Woman, man. Wonder Woman was amazing. Holy fuck. It was, it no, was amazing. Was, did How I, do did I do I that? spike it? Oh. Oh, no, it's... Yeah. Do you know how How to... How did I do that? Yeah, okay. Wonder Woman was amazing. It was amazing. (laughs) (laughs) We need to do that way more. I know. But, yeah, no, I... You know, as soon as I saw Rotten Tomato had a 90-something percent review on it, I was like, it has to be good. They're super hard critics. Yeah. So... And they've hated the DC EU. They've hated it like so hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like we we went to the 3D one. It wasn't like one of those super gimmicky like axes constantly being thrown in, in your, your face. face. Like yeah. it was really well done. No, it was everything crisp. about it was it really was good. Just, yeah, and the CGI was actually like awesome, amazing. It was almost seamless. Like a lot of times when you see like the superhero movies and they and they switch from the live action person to the 3D model. You can notice it. You can a little bit on this, but it's they're really good. Like they're they they implement a lot of slow motion so that they can do the live action and the big oh yeah and the sliding on the shield and shit. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's fucking intense. And then those those really action packed like uh, real time sequences where you they are three D models. They're really good. They're really well done. Mm-hmm. And like, well, just even her like lasso and everything like oh. how it lit up like it yeah, actually it like so it wasn't good. like super like they didn't actually, there it, wasn't like a huge emphasis on it it was just it was really well done and it was there and and they didn't make the suit like i love what they did i don't know if anyone caught this but if you watch um if you watch batman versus superman you can see that wonder woman's suit is like faded like the color on it's faded and then when you go back into Wonder Woman and you're watching that, you can see that it's not faded. So like she's obviously been using it the whole time mm-hmm. between World War One. So you're talking like, like at the end of the movie. At the end of, right? Like, no, when just she's just suit. on top of the fucking, um, just the suit itself, in the well, when she finds it and no, wears no. it in the in the movie is bright. That's what I mean. Like at the end when she jumps. Yeah, off and then it's faded. Shit, it's faded. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't notice that, but I was just... Is that where you noticed it when she I was... noticed it because in the Batman vs. Superman, it's really faded. Mm-hmm. So they they were planning it. They were obviously planning it like that. Mm-hmm. I love DC for that, those little tiny details. Another thing I love about DC is that these little... They pay, like, little homages to, to comics by, like, recreating classic comic book pages mm-hmm. in just, like, a middle of a sequence... So they did. They do stuff like that. You noticed one where Buddy's head was lined up with horns. Mm-hmm. Like they do shit like that. I like that. Yeah, it it was super good how they played off like Ares and like the villain and stuff. And see, the, I loved everything about the movie. It was great. My one critique, I think, is what they did with uh, with Ludendorff. This is a major spoiler. Part. So if you're still watching, 
and you really don't want a major, major spoiler. I'm going to, this is a huge spoiler right here. What they did, so you can tune out. What they did with Ludendorff, mm -hmm. right? Ludendorff was fucking terrifying. He was so good. Like, such a badass villain. Like, you know those terrifying people in, like, in, like, Nazi movies or, like, Schindler's List where the buddy just shoots the chick in the head for complaining or in, I think it's Pan's Labyrinth where the one guy's just, like... The wine like, bottle and it's like... <coughs> yeah, dude. Oh, those, like, that's... bad... Like, you look at them and you're like, that guy is a fucking sociopath. That's what they did with Ludendorff, and I fucking loved it. Like, it was... He was terrifying. But honestly... And then all of a sudden... You know why I, just, I appreciate it more that he wasn't... Ares was because of the fact that Ares even told Wonder Woman, she's like, it's, I'm not doing anything. I yeah, whisper these I things into their ears and they do that. it themselves. And it's like the ultimate sociopath human condition where this guy is so influenced by that force that Ares is yeah. putting upon him that he's capable of doing that. And then no, it I, just I makes really him even more of the, like. I it, didn't really look at it like that, but I'm just saying. No, my I think my critique w is more towards the performance of the real Ares to the performance of Ludendorff. Because Ludendorff killed it. That guy fucking crushed it. Mm -hmm. That was amazing, his, his portrayal of whoever that guy was. Mm -hmm. no. And, like, the, the guy who played Ares, while he wasn't Ares, was kind of underwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it wasn't... It was he was great, as but like, that's what made it so like unexpected when it's just like, what the fuck is this that? This weird oh, little shit. gimp guy is a fucking god. But then he gets super jacked. And yeah, stuff. and then he's like, uh, yeah, because you can pretty much. By the way, the the Ares, I'm so happy that they did the real, because when she was fighting Ludendorff, I was like, they fucking better bust out the Ares armor. And then he, she killed Ludendorff, and I was just like, so I was let Not down. Not one fucking drop of blood on the sword, though. That I, was kind of I weird. noticed that. I'll, I want to talk about that, too. But I was just saying how, like, Ludendorff, I was like, okay, that can't be it. He's, that can't be, because they didn't show Ares as Ares. So I knew something was coming. I didn't know. I was kind of upset that Ludendorff wasn't Ares, but I guess now that you say that, I, I get it. It still worked. Mm -hmm. And it was great. And that final fight was a little short, but it was good. Mm -hmm. And, um, but like what you're saying with the blood, the thing I like about DC as opposed to Marvel, Marvel's great. I love their movies. But the Marvel movies are really inconsequential. You can see their big fights and, they almost never show people dying. Whereas in Wonder Woman, in the first 20 minutes, the, they storm the beach and kill. Because that's what would happen. Mm -hmm. You have people fighting with guns and superpowers. People are going to get fucked up. So That was a super intense fight scene, by the way. I, I, don't, I love how DC doesn't shy away from that. Mm -hmm. And the way they can keep their PG rating is without blood. And I'm fine with that. I'm totally okay with that. Because if you add blood, it just becomes a little more gratuitous. and Even when she's like, you're bleeding, and it doesn't even show any blood. It doesn't show blood. But that's how they can get away with having that much death and destruction. I'm surprised they even showed that. that. Her Remember, little scar. Yeah, they had this, yeah, they had a little scratch or whatever, and then they're like, no, it's okay. She heals up. So well, she does heal. Funny. She's a god. Yeah. Spoiler alert. If well, you haven't been spoiled already. Thing <laughs> um, yeah. What else? Oh, the the secondary story arcs are amazing. Like, it's... It really... See, the thing about most comic book movies is that they're gimmicky and they show... It's a gimmick. Like, it's, it's a big, gratuitous fight with superheroes. But what Wonder Woman does is it's a fundamentally good film as well. Like, it, its secondary story is, like, uh, Steve Trevor and his little ragtag bandit crew and they're lo likable characters and they do and they even separate from it's so great what what he says at the end where he's like 
you, he's like, I can save today. You can save the world. And that's so awesome. And then those little, like the five guys or well, four guys. Well, if like he didn't fucking do what he did, then she would have never been able to realize yeah. what she could do. Right. Yeah. It was, and it was amazing. I loved what they did with Steve Trevor because moving forward from that movie, you can't really use Steve Trevor anymore because if you want to move advanced to where the Justice League is, Steve Trevor is either going to be 150, 15 years old or whatever even or dead so i liked what they did in making him a hero and sacrificing himself and being a consequential film like you gotta sacrifice and it it was just really well done yeah i'm really glad we actually saw that movie because i i i almost didn't want to go because it was just in such a bad mood and I don't know. I noticed you were much more cheerful afterwards too. No, it was just um No, I actually enjoyed watching yeah, that movie. It was so good. I just because like it didn't seem so fucking you know just predictable and just the same old gimmicky shit. Like it was actually like well thought out. Like the Yeah. Character development was good. Well it didn't totally drag out the beginning of like her upbringing and stuff. It didn't show, like, a huge montage of, like, her fucking... Yeah. It was just, like, it was kind of, like, here's the backstory. Just enough She's trained to tell up. You. Here's the conflict. And here's what she can do. Yeah. And I then, really like how they did. They showed her, um... Because those bracers that you have, they're, like, imbued in the comics. They're imbued with power. And it's really cool how they did that in the film. Like, Ares trying to kill her. She's just, like... And then zaps him. She she had Duke some Hadouken them, yeah. Hadouken. Yeah, it's so good. So, what uh, is there anything else you want to cover on that movie? Or? Uh, I think I just talked it up enough. I loved it. No, I, it wasn't without fault, but it was gr- it was good. It was really. I um, want to say that's my favorite comic book movie ever. I think. I I can't I mean the Dark Knight it was a different thing, right? It was it was really good, but I for like a serious film the Dark Knight is really good. Mm-hmm. And Marvel, I think my favorite Marvel would be Civil War. It was really good. And I think Guardians of the Galaxy was good, but I think I heard the second one wasn't as great. Yeah, but it it'll be good. Like it's always all the Marvel movies are good. Like, they're good in their own way. No, I realize that. They're different from DC. DC is more gritty. And that's another thing is there was a lot of... It wasn't... There was grit in this. There was... And there was a lot of fun, too. There was a a lot of fun they and a lot of... They just had the fucking sex scene. They should have no, just No, you can't do that. Bang, not for Woman. Not for... Like, the just film stands for something more than that. I'm kidding. But, no, you didn't even realize that... The whole, like, because, you know, they were in love and everything, and, like, that's why she. No, I know it. I think. I I just can't believe you. Now, thinking back, I think I did see that. I was just. I think I was checking to see if you were sleeping, because I thought you were sleeping. I thought you were sleeping. That's funny. I think we were both just, like, breathing heavy, because we're so into it. It It was so good. (laughs) And then, um. Yeah, so. What else? That's pretty much it for, uh. I was going to say something else. Oh yeah, DC. They they keep the grit. I like that. Marvel doesn't really keep the grit. They kind of polish it out. Mm-hmm. Even the, like a really gritty movie like Doctor Strange, where people die, at the end he reverses time. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Love Marvel, but I gotta say Wonder Woman killed it, and that's that's probably my favorite comic book movie. It was so. I good. think it was up there for me too. Besides, like, I think X Men First Class was really. Oh yeah, X Men Days of Future Past. That one's good too. That's definitely my top three. I would say is Dark Knight, Days of Future Past, and Wonder Woman. Yeah. I I don't think I could put a number one with those three, but they're that's the top three for sure. I'm hoping to say that the next movie that I'm going to say is my favorite comic book movie 
is Spawn. Like, I just hope they fucking kill yeah. that. It's supposed to be rated R. It's supposed to be. Well, especially with, like, Deadpool and Logan going rated R and doing so well, I think it's going to open up oh, the doors. It's going to be so fucking crazy. And they're redoing Hellboy rated R. What? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That's going to be. Hellboy was good. I loved Hellboy. Anyways, no, was. what what was your final rating for Wonder Woman? I would say, out of like ten, out of ten, at yeah, ten, let's do ten. Well, I'm not gonna say ten because no movie's perfect, yeah. but I'd say at, like eight point five to nine. Per yeah, when, like stars. I'm gonna say a solid nine. Yeah, a very solid nine. Yeah, I can right. agree with that. So that's uh, that's our show. Yeah, we uh, got a movie and an album review and an yeah. interview. It's I want to do that more. I want to do movie reviews more. Yeah, maybe was, we could do Alien Covenant or something. Yeah, that that was uh, about all we have time for. We're yeah. at, running at almost an hour and twenty five minutes. So we, we got to yeah. We still got to. I wanted to cap this one at an hour and a half, so we're we're pretty much right on schedule. Good. So thanks for watching. Thanks yeah. for listening if you're listening or watching. Yeah, and keep your eye out too. We're uh, going to try out for the first time this weekend. Uh, we're going to get the camera out. We're going to a cottage um, out on Lake Huron, Lake, I think. Yeah. Yeah. K near King Cardin. So, yeah. We're going to Buddy's Cottage. Hopefully, we can convince people to do something fun and hopefully, we get something good out of it. And yeah. You guys can enjoy that too. We'll probably see that next time. So, thanks for watching. All right. Thanks. See ya. Until next time. <laughs> Goodbye.